the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. And belly on up to the nine foot homemade oak bar, pour yourself a cold one. This is the weekend edition of the EP Podcast, a little different from what you normally get on Monday's 30 Minutes of Good. Coming up this Monday, we are going to have audio and interviews from many people at the big Abby Murphy celebration as she returns back to Evergreen Park with her Olympic silver medal. And we're going to stop by and talk to a couple other folks from around the area. So make sure you are subscribed on any podcast player, anywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. It's all brought to you by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park, who are dedicated to supporting our area with great banking tools and friendly service. They are a true community bank that provides our neighborhood with customized financial solutions, like total access checking. That's an account with free ATMs nationwide. That means wherever you use an ATM, it's free. If they charge you a fee, the bank puts the money back in your account. When you open up a total access checking account today, you get a $300 bonus. Open online at bankevergreenpark.com slash total access slash EP. $100 required to open. Requirements to qualify. Must use link to apply. Member FDIC. And remember, you can always just stop in and say hi in that iconic building at 95th and Pulaski and pick up your EP podcast, Car Magnet. On this weekend edition of the EP Podcast, I have a special treat for you. First of all, sitting down here with me at the 9-Foot Homemade Oak Bar is Glenn Panuski with The Village. How are you, Glenn? I am doing great. It is good to see you again in person, live here. Right here. You are doing this thing with the Candlelight Theater that I find really interesting because I am a fan of old-time radio and radio plays and theater of the mind. And when I was a morning radio guy, that was something I used to do. I used to, you know, tell jokes and do little bits and, you know, have conversations about important things. But every once in a while, we would do an episode where it was pure theater. I remember like uh, Halloween every year, I would do something where it was almost like a play, like our own version of War of the Worlds. Uh, We had a thing back in Champaign in 1999 where somebody had gone on the Oprah Winfrey show who was a psychic back when she used to have those kind of guests on and said that a person dressed as little Bo Peep was going to commit mass murder on a big 10 campus and gave like all these identifiers that they had seen. And like only three campuses in the big 10 fit. And one of them was the university of Illinois. And I had my stunt guy dress up as little Bo Peep. We had sheep released into the street on green street and we captured the imagination of everybody. Like it was a war of the world. So I love a good theater of the mind and mass panic. You're not you're not doing the mass panic, but you're doing the theater of the mind. You're thing. right. We I don't think we're going to be going to that extent. But yeah, <laughs> no, I think th- we talked about this before. You know, we we've had the theater program up and running for over at that senior center now for like seven years. Right. And uh, it slowed down by the pandemic. We will do something live on stage in the late spring, early summer. I don't know what that'll be yet, but in in January, I just had a, a bunch of our our regular you know, cast people who just wanted to get together to do something much like they did a year and a half ago, which is why we started up that online variety show. We did the, the web kind of like TV Ed Sullivan shows kind of a thing. And I've always been, as you said, a a fan of old time radio. And I said, well, why don't we try this? Because there's no sets you have to build. There's no costumes we have to rent. And so I just started developing a series of about 10 or 11 half hours uh, some of them will be variety shows where you have your comedy skits and some music. Others are full-length uh, recreations of some of the old great shows, Suspense Theater and um, The Whistler and Inner Sanctum, you know, things like that. So we're, as of now, this is Friday. We are about, next Monday, I believe, our f- fourth one is going to hit the uh, uh, the airwaves, so to speak. So. You have a couple of them out right now. Right. And I want to play them on this show, give you a little bit of exposure and, and just kind of enjoy it. Because to be honest with you, I, I, I love the idea behind putting radio plays out. And so I want to listen to one of them, come back and talk to you a little bit more. You sent me a couple of different skits. So we, which one would you like me to go with first? You have the fir tree, and the other one is the Adventures of Sir what? Sir got, Terrence. Let's Sir go Terrence. with the fir tree skit. This is based on an old Abbott and Costello routine. And a little spoiler alert, uh, despite the, the laughter, 
there is nobody in that hall except for the actors. That's which awesome. Is, which is one of the reasons why we're doing this, because we can set the recording tables far apart, socially distant, and... But you would never tell that if, if so take a listen. All right, we're doing a little old time radio here on the EP podcast with the Candlelight Radio Theater and Glenn Panuski. Uh, check out The Fir Tree. Well, Sebastian, where have you been? Why weren't you here fixing up the house for the party tonight? Well, I had to go down to the jail to get my landlady out on bail. Oh, poor Mrs. Satchel Puss. She got arrested for shoplifting. They finally caught her. I thought she was too smart to get caught. Yeah, well, she made a mistake. She stole an alarm clock and hid it in her bustle. Well, how did they catch her? Her bustle went off at quarter to eight. <laughs> Never mind the one. Did you send out the invitations for the party? Yeah, I got one of them right here. What a party I'm going to have. Aunt May will bring her cranberry sauce. That's her specialty. Aunt Catherine will bring her plum pudding. That's her specialty. And Aunt Eva will bring her 14 children. Oh, is that her specialty? You gotta admit she's good at it. <laughs> Look, Sebastian, how about the tree? Did you get a tree? I got the biggest Christmas tree you ever saw. I just got through putting it up in the living room, and what a tree! It's six feet higher than the ceiling. Oh, that's a shame we have to cut the top off. That's the way I felt about it, so I cut a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> You cut a hole in the ceiling of our living room? Yeah. This will be the first Christmas we ever had a tree in the upstairs bathroom. <laughs> what kind of tree did you get? Is it a fir? Yeah, well, it's one of those big... What did you say? I said, did you get a fir? No, I got a tree. <laughs> oh, stop the silliness. I want to see your fur. See my fur? Certainly. What am I, a silver fox? <laughs> No, no, you dummy. I'm not talking about fur, F-U-R. The fur I mean has an eye in it. The fur has an eye in it? Yes. Just one eye? Certainly. Must be nearsighted. You doesn't belong in the kind of fur that I'm talking about. I doesn't belong in that kind of fur? Oh, yes, I belongs in it, but you doesn't. <laughs> Why should you belong in fur if I doesn't? Oh, what a dope. I'm trying to find out what kind of a Christmas tree you've got. What kind of bark did it have? What kind of bark? Yes. Didn't you notice the tree's bark? No, I had my earmuffs on. <laughs> no, you idiot. Bark. Bark? Bark. All right. <laughs> Sebastian, the bark of the tree is the outer coat. Did the tree have a rough coat? No, but the girl who sold it to me had a smooth sweater. <laughs> Will you listen to me, please? The bark is the coat you find on the trunk of a fir tree. A tree has a trunk? Of course. Well, that must be where it keeps the coat and furs. <laughs> Sebastian, I'm going to try to explain this to you. Now, all Christmas trees belong to the pine family. No, no, they don't. My Christmas tree belongs to me. Let the pine family get their own tree. <laughs> no, no, forget the pine family. Sebastian... I don't think you even know anything about trees. Oh, yes, I do. I raise my own trees. Mm. Did you seed them yourself? What was that? <laughs> Did you seed them yourself? Did I seed them? Yes. Did you seed your own trees? Yeah, I seed them every day. I seed them this morning, and I seed them last night. You can come over and seed them anytime you want. <laughs> now, how can I seed them when you seeded them first? Look, Mr. Broadhurst... What have I got in front of my house? Trees. Did you seed them? No. Did I seed them? Yes. In other words, you looked at my trees, but you didn't seed them. That's right. Maybe you need glasses? <laughs> no, Sebastian. I think you need to get a smaller tree. Do you have a car? No, I loaned it to my cousin Louis Cristillo in Patterson. Well, we'll have to get another car. But where can we get one? Oh, you drive. Me drive? <laughs> You drive. I said, I drive. You don't drive it, I drive it. Drive what? Uh, you drive. <laughs> Why should I drive when you want to drive? I'm going to drive. Look, Sebastian, I'm renting a you drive and I drive it. Go, oh, then we both drive it. 
No, we do nothing of the kind. I drive it. When I say you drive, I don't mean you drive. I mean that I drive, although it's a uh, you drive. When you say you drive, you don't mean me drive. No. You mean you drive because I don't drive. Now you've got it. Now I got it? I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Get excited. Now look, Mr. Broadhurst, you go to a place and you are going to rent a car. Yes. You are driving the car. Yes. Where am I sitting? You're sitting right next to me. Uh, now, is there a steering wheel in front of me? No. And you are positive that I am not driving? I'm positive. And you are driving the car? Yes. All right. What kind of car are you driving? You drive. <laughs> better be driving. <laughs> oh, oh, look, please. I'm trying to explain this. We go and rent a car. Right, now where are we going to get it? You drive company. Oh, now I drive company. I thought we were going alone. Uh, you don't understand. It's hurts. You drive. Well, if it hurts, you drive. <laughs> That's right. That's right. This is getting worse. <laughs> Don't you see? The head of the company's hurts. Oh, that's too bad. What hurts him? <laughs> Nothing hurts him. Look, every company has a head. Naturally. Now, this company's heads hurts. Oh, why doesn't he take any aspirin? <laughs> Listen, it's hurts you drive all over the country. Well, if it hurts to drive all over the country, why should I drive and get hurt? You don't get hurt. I better not get hurt. <laughs> Look, Sebastian, please. Look, take it easy. The man's name is Hertz. He rents cars. You drive. It's the you drive all over the country. I got a better idea. <laughs> What's that? We don't drive anywhere. We just leave the Christmas tree in the bathroom where I put it in the first place. It is now time for your EP Podcast Weekend Bulletin Board services that are available locally to you. We're going to tell you about them. Larry Leapforth is a close personal friend of this show. He has practiced law in the South suburbs for decades. He is a former president of the Southwest Bar Association, and he's an evergreen parker. He brings in big settlements for personal injury, handles criminal defense, real estate probate, and corporate law as well. If you need an attorney, need to ask a legal question. Reach out to Larry now, 708-499-6300, or visit LeadForthLaw.com. If you're looking for a tow in Evergreen Park or the surrounding area, 24-7, 365, they'll also buy your junk cars. I'm talking about Dreamers Towing and Recovery. Tony has his phone sitting on his hip right now. You can call him now or when you actually need a tow. Get this number in your phone, 773-410-4549. And spring baseball, softball is about to start. It's coming up soon. I know you don't believe it looking out the window. You may want to get your kids ready. Conditioning classes or actual training in their sport. Doesn't have to be softball or baseball. Grinders Training Academy at 102nd and Kedzie handles everything when it comes to youth sports training. And they do conditioning fitness classes for kids and adults. They provide private coaching. Coaches can rent their facilities. Contact them directly right through grindersacademy.com. Learn more there as well. That's grinders with a Z, academy.com. I did an Epic and Castello skit and won a talent show one time. I, I won with uh, the Who's On First skit with my, I want to say I did it with a, like a childhood friend and we got up in front of an entire group in the sixth grade and I had that whole routine down. I could do all of Abbott and Costello. Like, I was a big Abbott and Costello fan. I've, I've watched all the movies and stuff like that. So do your actors get into when they're doing something really famous? Abbott and Costello 
for those that I mean they may not know, those were the big stars at one point, you know, nationwide, and to be able to do a well, skit biggest, by them must biggest be cool. wartime box yeah. office of World War II, yeah. And the fellow that was with me in that skit, it was a fellow named Kevin Denny. Um, we've performed that skit live several times. We've done the Who's On First skit. That's something that, okay, when you say that you had done it, I'm sure you were reading the script. No, that, no, I had to memorize it. That, see, that, I don't, that is almost impossible. Oh, no, I had my, the whole thing down. Oh, my golly. We, we memorized it. We spent months. We memorized well, you'd have it. have to take months, yeah. And we did it in front of a, a crowd, and we did the entire Who's On First skit, and we nailed it. I mean, I, I I could probably do the majority of it right now. And it isn't just the lines; people. it's the timing, right? Because you, you have know. to cut people. You have to cut the other one off. You have to get excited. I played um, Costello right. because he's the one that's like the the fat, angry, gets really ticked off guy who's confused. So you're doing this right now on the Village website, right. correct? And are they all there on demand? Like if somebody wants to see the ones you've done yep. before, they can they go stay back up there? there? The first one we did came out in early February. It was a recreation of an Inner Sanctum episode. Then episode two was a variety show, and that's where you pulled this uh, that one bit. Uh, episode three is an episode of um, Suspense, I believe. And then uh, we've got a episode of Blondie, uh, and and I'm happy to say I've been used on these. I have. I, I'm happy to say, folks, that Chris has actually joined the troupe because he is our uh, announcer. I've been typecast, and as will a radio also announcer. be appearing in a <laughs> Marx Brothers half hour. We'll uh, probably get recording in mid March. Okay. So, um, so, so Chris is part of the uh, the the ensemble as well. You know what this reminds me of? There was a show on in the '80s, no, in the '90s on AMC called Remember When, W-E-N-N. It was a, a sitcom about this troupe of actors at a local radio station in the 40s. And it was actually an entertaining show. It's kind of disappeared now. So I like this, though, how I've been typecast and dragged in. I can't say I can't say no to you. That's the problem. You go, hey, Chris, can you record this stuff for me? Can you come on my play? And I'm like, ah, all right, I'll do it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. I'll jump in with the actors. And I just hope that they're not like put off by it because I'm not part of the troupe. Like I'm not part of the you acting You are. Troupe. You've been on stage. And then with I us just, they just you just use me. I show up every once in a while, and they're probably like, "Who's this prima donna? He doesn't show up for practice. He just shows up and sight reads the entire thing and leaves. That's that's what I do. Well, I'm that guy. And, and the great thing about you announcing is you don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home. I <laughs> send you the script. You send me some MP3s. We edit you in. And <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't even have to leave my basement. Exactly. Yeah. You don't know when that I'm won't wearing. Happen when you do Chico Mark. Yeah, you have no idea when I'm wearing pants and when I'm not wearing pants. Right. Sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not. That'll when give. You, a, that'll give a new perspective for the people who are listening <laughs> to the show. That... All right. So you can check these out on the village website, evergreenpark-ill.com. I think it's a really cool idea. I just like the creativity behind doing radio plays and the theater behind the entire thing. Uh, the fact you're doing an on-demand radio program in Evergreen Park that is now something else that people can listen to besides the EP podcast. I don't know. I, I don't want to get into a radio or war with you. So no, 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 no. This no, isn't no. going to be like permanent, right? Uh, we are we are not competition for the EP That's podcast. Good. That's we are good. just we, an alternate. We can't have any competition. No, right. There's However, I will say, and I mentioned this off mic, uh, cheer, cheer for Abby Murphy coming home here to Evergreen Park. I would love to, if, to get her in on a comedy skit. What will Abby play? Do you have a hockey part for her? You like to typecast. Okay, let's... If Abby Murphy <laughs> would like to be in a comedy skit... Right. I will get something specifically for her that she likes. Yes, yes. I think she would have a good time with our wacky, zany right. people. And now here's Abby Murphy with the radio play version of Slapshot. Right, exactly. She'll be playing all three handsome brothers. They're, right, right. <laughs> yep, every Monday night. Uh, I usually have the new episode drop on that website under the Candlelight Theater uh, uh, drop-down menu, they usually hit about 5 o'clock. And then I always tag that to our e-blast, too. You know, we do that uh, the newsletter e-blast. Right, so. right. Excellent. E easy what's, to find. What's the name of this other one we're going to listen to as we get out of here? Okay. Uh, this is, um, if you are familiar with some of the old uh, Red Skelton or Danny K movies, this is a recreation, uh, modified a little bit, of the old uh, Chalice in the Palace skit. Okay. Where the knight is about to joust with the evil guy, but his uh, his people have put some poison in a chalice that is meant for the uh, the adversary, and uh, there's this whole play on words. And again, 
take a listen. All right, Glenn Panuski right there. Make sure you check out the plays. They're doing these radio plays coming out each and every week on the website for the village, evergreenpark-ill.com. We leave you this weekend with one more edition, one more entry, one more skit from the Candlelight Radio Theater. We bring you to the glorious days of the Knights of the Round Table, a time of chivalry and a time of duels to the death. We join our hero, Sir Terence, as he paces anxiously in nervous anticipation of his forthcoming duel with the evil Sir Griswold. He is joined by his beloved, Lady Veronica. Terence, my brave knight! Lady Veronica, my beloved! And he is then joined by his sister, the good lady Beatrice. Brother! Beatrice, my good sister, prepare me for my funeral as I face Griswold in this bloody duel. First, he and I will drink a toast, and then we fight. And then I charge you to take care of Lady Veronica here, my beloved. You will not die, and you will not have to fight him. Griswold dies as he drinks the toast. What? Listen, we have put a pellet of poison in one of the vessels. Which one? The one with the figure of a pestle. The vessel with the pestle? Yes. But you don't want the vessel with the pestle. You want the chalice from the palace. I... I don't want the vessel with the pestle. I want the chalice from the what? The chalice from the palace. Huh? It's a little crystal chalice with the figure of a palace. The... The chalice from the palace has the pellet with the poison? No, the pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle. Oh, oh, the pestle with the vessel. The vessel with the pestle. What about the palace from the chalice? Not the palace from the chalice, the chalice from the palace. Where's the pellet with the poison? In the vessel with the pestle. Don't you see? The pellet with the poisons in the vessel with the pestle. The chalice from the palace has the brew that is true. It's so easy, I can say it. Well, then you fight him. (laughs) Listen carefully. The pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle. The chalice from the palace has the brew that is true. Where the pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle, the chalice from the palace has the brew that is true. Good man. Just remember that, Terrence. And with that, the two good ladies step away, leaving our hero to ponder his directive. The pellet with the poison, the pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle, the palace from the chalice has a brew that is blue. (laughs) No. The pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle, the ch- and the pellet with the plip, the pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the plazzle, and the plazzle with the blazzle, the pestle with the poi. And just when he thinks that he's got it down, the good ladies return. I've got it, I've got it. The pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle, the chalice in the palace has a brew that is true. Right, but there's, there's been a change. They broke the chalice from the palace. They broke the chalice from the palace? <laughs> Placed it with a flagon. Flagon. With a figure of a dragon. Flagon with a dragon. Right. Did you put the pellet with the poison in the vessel with the pestle? No, the pellet with the poison's in the flagon with the dragon. The vessel with the pestle has the brew that is true. <laughs> the pellet with the poison's in the flagon with the dragon. The vessel with the pestle has a brew that is true. Just, Just remember, remember that. that. And with that, the ladies step away. But our hero paces. He is joined by the evil Sir Griswold. Sir Griswold! Sir Terence, our duel is set to begin. Not so fast, Sir Griswold. Before our duel, it is our custom to share a toast. (laughs) No need, Sir Terence, for I have already drank from the royal cup. That breaks protocol. I do not live by protocol. But then, Sir Terence, our not-so-bright hero begins to put two and two together. 
By heavens, I have just put two and two together, Sir Griswold. <laughs> what do you mean? From which flask did you drink? From the coveted flagon with the imprint of a dragon. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and right on cue, Sir Griswold collapses. <laughs> And the Lady Veronica returns and falls into our hero's arms. Sir Terence, you are victorious! Tis always the case with the adventures of Sir Terence. Look at all those people in this great suburb Driving down 95th and Ked Z What a great place! It's called Evergreen Park, but we know it better as the EP. We're known for more than just the Unabomber. Remember Ted Kaczynski? You guys might even remember that big old rooster on 95th Street. It's all part of EP's history. So listen up to the EP podcast. You might be asking why because we talk about all things and we celebrate all the great things in the 60805 it's the ep podcast all things evergreen park it's the ep podcast evergreen park